Now I'm reading chapter four of The Chocolate Lab. By the time Hannah and I set things up in the chocolate laboratory, it looks messier than I've ever seen it. Okay, maybe not as messy as when Coco goes on one of his rampages, but it's pretty bad. We raided the storage closet, the pantry upstairs, and the leftovers from our Easter baskets for anything that might win awards inside a piece of chocolate. Piles of different possible fillings cover the countertops. Heaps of marshmallow tower over the gummy bears, who would probably run for avalanche cover if they could move their gummy little legs. The Sour Patch Kids would be crying for their mommies if they could see the stacks of Oreos threatening to topple onto them. And hopefully, none of the animal crackers have nut allergies because the macadamias have already spilled onto them. I'm not so sure your parents would approve of you messing up the chocolate lab, Miss Meredith says from the stool behind the cash register. They said we could come down here as long as we didn't bug you, Hannah says. It's not a lie, but it's definitely stretching the truth. Anyhow, Mom says that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% misperation, I say. By those numbers, we're almost finished. You're going to clean up when you're done, right? Miss Meredith says. Of course, I say, because I'm not your maid. We know, I say, trying to keep what mom calls my bad attitude voice from sneaking in. Miss Meredith looks up from her phone and peers over the low wall that separates the shop from the laboratory area. Chocolate isn't cheap, she says. Don't waste it or your parents will get upset. We're not wasting it, I say. This time, my bad attitude voice does creep in. Anyhow, Hannah says, mom won't get upset when we invent the best chocolate ever and win the big chocolate expo. Is that what you're doing? Miss Meredith says. Well, good luck with that. Her cell phone chirps and she goes back to texting. The clickety clack of her falcon nails echoes so loud in my head that it's hard to think about chocolate or anything else. I like it all the piled up ingredients and tighten my grip on Coco's collar. He seems less itchy than he usually does uh, round all his chocolate, this chocolate. Maybe he realizes how much, how important what we're doing is. How come I get the feeling that inventing the best chocolate ever is going to be harder than we thought, I say. Hannah scans the counter. Her eyes dart back and forth between the mountains of fillings like she is solving some complicated math problem. We just need to think of something no one else has thought of before, she says. Coco stares at the graham crackers. He licks his tongue over his nose like he's trying to tell me something. Then he hops up and plants his front paws on the counter. Put Coco outside, Hannah says. Yeah, get the dog out of the store, Miss Meredith calls over. I pull Coco back. He's okay, I say. He just needs to get used to it in here. I turn to Coco and stick my face right up to his. Isn't that right, boy? Coco licks my nose. His tongue feels like a warm piece of bologna, but... It's okay. I like baloney. If that dog messes things up, it's all of us who end up in the doghouse, Hannah says. Me, you, and Coco. And me, Miss Meredith says. She snaps a photo of our mess. Hannah glares over the wall at Miss Meredith. Coco sits down and his tail starts to thump, starts thumping. His eyes don't leave that plate of graham crackers. What if we pile things on top of a graham cracker and cover it all in chocolate, I say. Just the thought of it makes my taste buds wag their tails. I snap a graham cracker in half and pile many marshmallows, two Swedish fish, and three jelly beans on it. Then place a caramel square on top. I grab the whole thing with a pair of tongs and dip it into a pot of melted milk chocolate. Two jelly beans shoot out the side and skitter across the counter, leaving a trail of yummy-looking chocolatey dots. I scoop the beans up and squish them back into my creation. Hannah wrinkles her nose. What? I asked. That looks terrible. It's all my favorite candies piled together. How can it be bad? Trust me, she says. It'll be bad. I take a bite. The still steaming chocolate stings my lips and my arm jerks away from my face. My candy creation flings out of the tongue. My candy creation flings out of the tongues, flies across the lab and splats against the far wall. Everything drops to the floor except the Swedish fish who decide to stick they're right above the drying racks. If they had mouths, they'd be making fun of me in Swedish. So, Hannah asks, you were right, I say. It was terrible. She shoves me aside and gets to work.